out onto the stage. Thank you very much for coming to see us today. So Cinderella is the classic fairy tale to me. It's a magical, magical story. Um, there's some great romance in there. It's got all the, all the great friendships between Cinderella and Buttons. There's some fabulous laughter. We've got some great comedy scenes. Why do they hate me so? Probably because you're beautiful and they're not. Do you think so? Oh, thanks, Buttons. <laughs> you cheered me up a bit. <laughs> Hello. That's great, Cinderella. All I ever want is for you to be happy. Oh look, a spontaneous entrance to villagers. Must be an end of scene song coming up. That's not a happy street. six years old, I went to see Cinderella at the Theatre Royal Windsor, which is my home theatre, because I live just down the road from Windsor. And I remember looking at it and standing up and pointing to the stage. I remember it vividly. It was only a couple of years ago. And I looked at Buttons and I said, I want to be him when I grow up. And now, incredibly, I am being Buttons. And it's just a wonderful, because the, the story of Cinderella there's nothing quite like it. So the plot of Cinderella. So Cinderella is just sort of your normal village girl living a quiet life with her dad. He's just been away traveling for a couple of months and he's got married again. Um, her mother isn't around anymore. That brings two rather terrible stepsisters into Cinderella's life. And ever the optimist, she's very excited to meet her new sisters. Doesn't quite go as planned, but she has some wonderful people around her, like her best friend, Buttons, who is always there to put a smile on her face when things go a little bit wrong. Hello, everyone! <laughs> Welcome back after all the lockdowns. I was never sure if I was meant to be in or if I was allowed out. I got addicted to the hokey cokey in. Out, in, out, I shook it all about, but I managed to turn myself around, and that's what it's all about. <laughs> My name is Buttons this year, same character, different costume. I'm called Buttons because I wear loads of buttons to keep the clothes from falling down. But the story of Cinderella has so many twists and turns, and as in every pantomime, it focuses on a downtrodden character who then triumphantly reaches their goal and their aspirations. So in Cinderella's case, she's this poor little old thing and she's sweeping the floor and she's got nasty stepsisters. 
and all she wants is to fall in love with a man. She's not a greedy person, she doesn't want wealth and riches, she just wants to be like a normal person that's married with you know, little children and things and things, because that's all, she's just a, a beautiful, beautiful soul. Um, Cinderella bumps into the prince in disguise in the forest. Like I said, what a beautiful girl. And now's my chance. Now that I'm no longer a prince, well, I can talk to her. Hello. Oh, you startled me. I am sorry. Were you part of the group that was with Dan, <laughs> the prince? Oh, no. Although I expect he's very regal, he wouldn't interest me. <laughs> he's nothing like that, actually. Then you know him. What's he really like? Um, very kind and handsome, generous, delightful fellow, in fact. First time I've been with Anna, uh, who plays my wonderful Cinderella. A uh, brilliant actress, wonderful person to be on stage, most gorgeous voice. Um, and it's been a real joy to be around her. It's, a it's been a very different year for me this year. I've played Peter Pan in Pantomime for such a long time. And what's more, I think I'm in love. That being Prince Charming was kind of a bit of a daunting thing to me because he's usually quite a wet character, uh, quite not much about him and, and uh, Predominantly, like, supposed to be like the romantic butch man lead, which is something that I'm not used to playing. I'm used to being a child on stage and fun and dancing around and flying on wires. So it's been really helpful to have someone who's been such uh, a great help and easy to act against. Uh, her take on Cinderella is wonderful. The, the choices she makes on stage are, are really wonderful to play opposite and makes my job a lot easier. So, yeah, it's been a joy to be with her. My name is John Lyons, and I play Baron Hardop, Cinderella's dad. Oh, my dear, sweet Cinderella. Yeah. You really are the best girl a father could ever hope for. You know, I, I do miss your mother. Well, the Baron, yes, he's, he's Baron Hardup, lives at Hardup Hall. Now, he is, yes, the, uh, the father of Cinderella. And in the story, he's just come back from his holidays where he had a holiday romance. Oh, good evening, everybody! Hello. Have they all gone home? What happened? I say good evening, everybody! 
My name is Baron Hardup. I'm Cinderella's dad. <laughs> Harder by name, harder by nature. Now, I may live at Harder Hall, but I'm very poor. Aww. Oh, I'm poorer than that. <laughs> well, I'm just back from my holidays, where I had a holiday romance. <laughs> and unfortunately, he got married. Well, I did the decent thing and I married the girl. But when she found out I had no more money, she up and left me. Just like that. The problem is, her two daughters decided to follow me back here to Florizel, where they heard there was a single friend. But the problem was, and this is his big problem, her two daughters, my stepdaughters now, have come back with me to Florizel because they've heard there was a single prince looking for a oh, wife. You'll understand why when you meet them. I'll see you later, boys and girls. Uh, you know, it's a story about these two uh, rather shy, retiring, yes. retiring girls, very pretty, but overlooked. I mean, it should be called The Pretty Sisters instead of Cinderella, really, shouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Well, I mean, if you listen to their version of it, because they, um, they have very strong views about it. Nice! Is that what he is? Well, we'll be nice to you, too. Uh, they, they think that the, there's far too much emphasis on Cinderella and a prince and all of that. And, you know, and it's not, it's not on them and, and how, how they suffer. We demand! We demand you clean our room, prepare our meals, wash our clothes, run our Instagram, post how gorgeous we are, and you do all these things for us, we'll get on really well. But if you don't, we'll block you on social media. All the shame! And then kick you out of the family home. <laughs> And they and do suffer, don't, don't they? Don't they? Oh. They do, really. Well, you know, I mean, I, I, I hesitate to, to sort of agree with everything they say, but um, they, they, they get very left out of everything, even though they try to be kind. They're very care. kind, those girls, I think. They are, aren't they? They are. I, think, I, think I mean, when they don't get what they want, they're really kind. They're kind to their dad, they're kind to Cinderella. Yeah. They're kind to the, the prince, you know. We'll get him one day, they will. Sound the trumpet! Here comes the crumpets! No lucky, like no lucky! Like Let the hooky see the corky! Let the rabbit see the hoon! Hey, Your Majesty, Your Majesty! Now, these are my two charming stepdaughters! Look, sis! Man! Um, she ends up being a bit of a slave to the sisters, having to cook, clean, do all the household chores. And that is when her fairy godmother steps in. Um, so that's a very special moment in our show. Good morning, my child. Good morning, dear lady. Oh, you look so tired. Is there anything I can do to help you? I came here to look for find, but my poor old back is so stiff. I cannot bend to pick it up. Here, please take this bundle. I can easily gather more. Oh, it's very good of you, my dear. By the way, would your name happen to be Cinderella? Why, yes. Ah, Cinderella, what an unusual name. How did you come by it? It's because I spend my time sitting by the cinders of the fire daydreaming. <gasps> There's no harm in daydreaming. It's only in your daydreams you discover your true heart's desire. Oh, dear Cinderella, you've been so very kind to me. Perhaps one day, I will be a friend to you. Good day, my child. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a strange old lady. And how 
Um, Cinderella bumps into the prince in disguise in the forest. Um, he's pretending to be his aide, Dandini. Ah, oh, there you are, Dandini. I mean, your royal highness. <laughs> you seem to be having a good time with the villagers. Well, you know, when in Rome and all that. Tickets for the ball, anyone? <laughs> so my role is basically a comedy side, I see it as, for Prince Charming. So he's dotedly in love and... I'm there just taking the mick out of him and give him a great idea of, uh, you know, we are going to have a ball and uh, to find his love of his life and then he switches places with me. No, no, I want you to go back to the palace immediately. Make sure everything's sorted for the ball tonight. There's only so much deception one person can take in one day. Oh, but it's so shiny. <laughs> oh, oh, well. Spot, spot. Never mind. Back to the lonely life of being a family. <laughs> she wants to go to the ball more than anything because that's where she knows she'll see him again. And all hopes and dreams of going to the ball are shattered when her sisters make her tear up her, tear up her invitation. <laughs> tear it up! But, Fairy Godmother steps in. Oh! Oh my goodness! Exactly! It's your goodness that has brought me here. For as Magical transformation happens, which I won't give too much away of, because that's a really nice part. There's still one more thing I need to create. A beautiful ball gown for this special date. And Cinder's you'll look like you're sent from above. The prince won't know what's hidden, and will soon fall in love! Cinderella makes it to the ball and she meets her prince and they share a very special moment. Somebody to
Lou. We've known Lav and Lou for a long time, haven't we? With Lav and Lou, we've known, it was about 13 years. Yeah. We've known Lav and Lou, and um, I mean, we live in the garage. Yeah, they, they basically make us work. So we have sewing machines out in the garage, we have um, everything. They have about 50 glue guns, um, everything. Glitter, so we create. Feathers, fur. We create Lav and Lou. Then she realises later on in the story that it's actually the prince, but it hasn't actually affected her love for that human being. She doesn't seek wealth and riches. It just comes to her through her love of that particular man. strikes the spell ends and she has to leave she has to get out um, so I'm, I'm not sure where else to go there then everything is a bit bonkers for a while <laughs> we've got some very good scenes in our show there some some great comedy scenes that come shortly after the ball it's all these Christmas parties I keep going to at number 10 <laughs> Sis, I don't like the look of this place. It seems really spooky to me. Oh, never mind, sis. Barry's waiting for us to get undressed and get ready for bed. Hit it, maestro! <laughs> What, what, you know, the, the, the other side of it is, of course, the makeup. Because, of course, they. Well, I mean this very kindly, but they take several hours in makeup every day. They do. Um, to look as glamorous as they do. They'll help you for saying they that. They will tell people they wake up like that, but. Uh, it's uh, not true. Uh, it's, it's not, not true. true. No, no, no. I have occasionally changed the solo. I do a solo that, you know, you just write down in the key of what it was. And uh, because Jamie, who's playing the Prince, he's from Union J, I've been adding um, a few of his songs into the solo to see which ones he can guess I'm playing. <laughs> Eventually, we get the fairy tale happy ever after that we could always ask for. It fits! It fits! Oh, yes. And I'm glad to say, as the play progresses, she meets her prince, the shoe fits, and at the end, she gets married, and I become, at the end, the father of the bride. Cinders, 
I'm so very happy and so very, very proud of you. <laughs> but where's your other shoe? I'll take on eBay. It's bound to be listed by now. <laughs> Cinderella gets her prints and she gets her crystal shoes back and everybody lives happily ever after. <laughs> Cinderella, I have one last thing to ask you. May I have your hand in marriage? Well, don't stint yourself, mate. Have the lot. <laughs> will you marry me? Yes, I will. Ah! It's a beautiful theatre. I mean, just take a look around. It's, it's incredible, isn't it? It's a wonderful theatre. I've had people come up from London and they've watched it um, and most of them say, and in fact we had a lady here the other night, another director, and she said, you have the best sets I've seen all around this country. Not only the best sets, but the best costumes. We aren't spoiled for choice here. You aren't spoiled for every musical coming on tour here. You aren't spoiled for being next to the West End within 30 minutes. So when shows and, and good shows come to the theatre and the people can watch it, they genuinely love it. And they really get involved. And that's been the most wonderful thing is seeing real life people watching us, enjoying it as much as we do. I'm not biased, but it's my favourite venue that I've done a show in so far. I love it. I think it's a gorgeous auditorium, gorgeous location, right on the seafront, and everyone is so, so lovely with the staff. Everyone.